The 2019-2020 NHL season is now fully underway. We have two nights of NHL action in the books, and we just wrapped up the NHL Global Series game where the Philadelphia Flyers defeated the Chicago Blackhawks, in which was a very, very entertaining game. So I thought I would hop on and make this video because I've watched a lot of games over the past two nights, and I wanted to talk about six NHL players that I think are in great positions to have a breakout year, whether it's a rookie that has been surprising out of training camp, a veteran getting a shot in the top six, I'm going to cover all the players like that in today's video, so let's waste no more time and jump right into it. Starting the video off with Nikolai Ehlers of the Winnipeg Jets. He really, really impressed me last night against the New York Rangers. Albeit it was in a losing effort, I definitely think he was the best Winnipeg Jet on the ice last night. And he has kind of taken Kyle Connor's spot on that top line, along with Blake Wheeler and Mark Scheifele. And if he stays on that line for the full season and stays healthy, he is going to have a monster year in my opinion. And I really like this move by Paul Marie because it definitely balances out the lineup a little bit and you could see Nikolai Ehlers was clicking with Wheeler and Shifley very very well last night and if they continue to have chemistry like that I think Nick Ehlers should shatter his career high in points and maybe even be up there around a point a game player because now you have two playmakers on that top line and then a very good goal scorer in Mark Shifley who had 38 this past season and having Kyle Connor on that line it was kind of like two goal scorers and a playmaker and now you have Nick Ehlers who could kind of do both but he showed off last night that his playmaking skills are very very underrated he had three assists setting up Blake Wheeler I believe twice and then I believe he set up Mark Shifley from behind the net for a snapshot in the slot it was just a very very good game for Nick Ehlers and he came close to getting a goal of his own a couple times and if he continues to play like that I definitely think he is a player a lot of people should look out for to have a monstrous season and if he's a free agent in any of your fantasy pools I definitely think he is worth picking up and testing him out for at least a couple games he now has 202 career points in 299 games last year was definitely a down year for him so it was really nice to see him get off to that hot start obviously I'm not showing his 2019-20 stats just yet because most players have just played one game so far but once we're probably like five to ten games into the year I will start showing the stats from this season as opposed to their stats from last year so Nikolai Ehlers really impressive game for him last night and now let's see if he can follow it up tonight against the New Jersey Devils next up we have Buffalo Sabres rookie Victor Olofsson he's a 24 year old left winger was drafted in the seventh round 181st overall back in the 2014 NHL draft and he's definitely a guy that was on a lot of people's radars heading into this season because he was a monster in the AHL for Buffalo last year 66 games played 30 goals and 33 assists for 63 points and he actually finished the year in the NHL with the Buffalo Sabres where he played in six games and had two goals and two assists for four points and obviously had a very good training camp and was very very good in the preseason and earned himself a spot on that top line for Buffalo along with Jack Eichel and Sam Reinhardt and we saw Jeff Skinner on that top line last year and what it did for him he put up 40 goals for the first time in his career and I'm not saying Victor Olsen is going to be a 40 goal scorer or even like a 20 goal guy but I definitely think he is a rookie who could easily put up 50 points if he stays on that Buffalo top line and if he continues to produce with those guys because he's obviously very very skilled and getting a player like that in the seventh round is obviously a massive steal by the Buffalo Sabres and they have to be super excited about Victor Olsen I know a lot of Buffalo Sabres fans are and last night in his first game of the season his first game on that Buffalo top line he had an assist so it was definitely a really solid start to the year for Victor Olsen and that assist came in a Buffalo Sabres win obviously we saw the good start that they got off to last year and then they tailed off in a big way so hopefully this year they can find some more consistency because if they do this is definitely a team that could be a threat to make the playoffs next up we have Cody Glass for the Vegas Golden Knights a 20 year old centerman obviously a rookie who made the team out of training camp and not only did he make the team he's centering a line with wingers like Max Pacioretty and Mark Stone. Those are some elite wingers to have on your wing when you're a young rookie like Cody Glass. You could say that is Vegas's first line. I feel like they kind of got like a 1A, 1B type thing going with the Smith, Carlson, and Marchessault line because that line was obviously very, very good on opening night for them as well. But Cody Glass just really impressed me. He did not look like a rookie out there whatsoever. And in my opinion, he did a fantastic job on that line with Pacioretty and Stone. And obviously that was capped off with a goal assisted by Max Pacioretty off a nice pass and Cody Glass was able to finish it out front. And I'm not just saying he had a good game because he scored a goal. He was all over the ice. He seemed like he was really up to speed. He was on the first power play unit as well, where he had some really good scoring opportunities as well. And if Cody Glass can stay on that line for Vegas all year, then I definitely think 100% he could be a Calder Trophy candidate when the season does come to an end. Now, obviously, Vegas doesn't have Cody Eakin healthy right now. And when Cody Eakin's in the lineup, I'm not quite sure what that is going to mean for Cody Glass. But if he continues, 
continues to play like this, I can't see any reason why Gerard Gallant would decide to put a veteran in the lineup over him because Cody Glass looked fantastic on opening night for the Vegas Golden Knights, and now we're going to have to wait and see if he can follow that up tonight once again against the San Jose Sharks, but this time in the Shark Tank, obviously a much different atmosphere, but that first game, man, for Vegas, they look scary, and I know it's hard not to overreact from just one game, and San Jose was missing a lot of guys, most notably Eric Carlson and Evander Kane, so you can't really look too much into it, but Vegas was clicking on all cylinders, Marc-Andre Fleury looked fantastic in net, and yeah, Cody Glass just really impressed me, and in my opinion, he is definitely a player in a prime position to have an amazing year. Next up, we have Brandon Tanev from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, when the Pittsburgh Penguins signed Brandon Tanev this summer to that lucrative contract for a guy that a lot of people thought would be in the bottom six, everyone was pretty skeptical, and a lot of Penguins fans really didn't like the contract at all, but I guess Jim Rutherford had different ideas and wanted Brandon Tanev to have a much more prominent role with the Pittsburgh Penguins than he ever had in his entire career with the Winnipeg Jets because over the course of his career in Winnipeg, he was always like a fourth line guy, maybe a third line guy sometimes, and occasionally would get an appearance on the second power play unit, but really nothing more than that. He would never have cracked the top six in Winnipeg considering how good the wingers in their top six are, but he still had a pretty good season last year. He had 14 goals and 15 assists for 29 points, and considering he was for the most part on their fourth line and just out there killing penalties and doing some good work five and five, those are some pretty solid numbers. So it definitely makes sense as to why Pittsburgh was intrigued with Brandon Tanev and they wanted to bring him in. You guys know Hatrick Line, I've done videos with him before. He's one of my best friends in real life. He's a Winnipeg Jets fan, and I always used to joke with him that Brandon Tanev is the best bottom six forward in the NHL because he does basically everything you want from your bottom six guy. He can kill penalties, he can chip in some offense here and there. I mean, he had 14 goals last year. He finishes his hits. I believe he was like top five in hits in the regular season this past year. Brandon Tanev, in my opinion, is definitely a guy that you would want on your team. And the Pittsburgh Penguins were actually playing him on a line with Evgeny Malkin and Alex Galchenyuk in the first game of the regular season. There was even some rumors that Brandon Tanev had a chance to play with Sidney Crosby. And if he continues to be a top six winger on that team, I definitely think 20 goals are in the cards for Brandon Tanev in this season with the Pittsburgh Penguins. He didn't register a point in his debut with them, but it was in a 3-1 to one loss. Pittsburgh didn't really look that good in general, but hopefully they give him another chance and they don't just take him off that second line right away because if he continues to play with Malkin and Galchenyuk, he definitely should shatter his career high of 29 points that he had this past season with the Jets. I like Brandon Tanev a lot, maybe not so much as a first line winger, but Pittsburgh definitely does have the reputation of having wingers just really blossom on that team because you have such elite center in like Malkin and Crosby and you know just based off one game so far the line that he's on he's definitely in a pretty good position to have a good year. Moving along now we have Brett Ritchie of the Boston Bruins. Now Brett Ritchie for the most part spent his career with the Dallas Stars had a 16 goal year but after that it was kind of downhill and especially last year he had an awful year 53 games played four goals and two assists for six points. He's a 26 year old winger and he came over to the Boston Bruins this summer and in their first game of the season he was actually skating on that second line with Jake DeBrusque and Charlie Coyle. Now I'm not quite sure how the lineup will be though moved around when guys like David Krejci come back from injury but if Brett Ritchie continues to play like he did last night he scored a goal and was just all over the place and obviously he was probably inspired playing his former team in the Dallas Stars but he didn't look out of place whatsoever in that second line with the Boston Bruins and if he can continue to play with them for the most part you know the majority of the season or even when David Krejci comes back that would probably bump Charlie Coyle down to third line centerman and then you could have Richie with Krejci and Jake DeBrusque. I think if he skates with them for the majority of the year, he could definitely get back up there and be like a 15 to 20 goal scorer like he was for one year with the Dallas Stars and that would definitely be a huge plus for the Boston Bruins and a really good thing for Brett Richie because it's been pretty rough for him over the past couple of years and based off of watching last night's game against Dallas, I think if he continues to play like that, he's in a pretty good position to have a solid year. And now finishing out the video with a relatively obvious one, but it has to be Alex Nylander of the Chicago Blackhawks, a 21 year old winger, a former top pick by the Buffalo Sabres, didn't really work out there whatsoever so was traded this past summer to the Blackhawks in exchange for young defenseman Henry Yokiharu and the Blackhawks kind of did this last year when they acquired Dylan Strom, a young top draft pick who wasn't working out with the team that drafted him. They took a chance on him and obviously we saw how Dylan Strom played after the trade that sent him to Chicago and now Alex Nylander is skating on a top line with Jonathan Taze and Patrick Kane for the Chicago Blackhawks and scored in his Chicago debut in the Global Series game today and all in all just looked very 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 good, had multiple scoring chances, was out there on the power play, and is definitely a guy that if he stays on that line, is another player like Cody Glass or like a Vic
Victor Olsen that I think could be a potential dark horse for the Calder Trophy and you know get their name in that conversation when the season eventually does come to an end. I know this could be overreacting a little bit but Alex Nylander is definitely looking like a very very good pickup for the Chicago Blackhawks and that trade that everyone really criticized from the Blackhawks side this past summer is now not looking so bad for them. So that is going to wrap up today's video. I really hope you guys did enjoy. This was definitely a fun video to make because I watched a lot of games over the past two days and really found myself wanting to talk about them like I said in yesterday's video. So I thought talking about some players that impressed me and some players that in my opinion at least are in a prominent role to have a very good year would be a pretty solid video idea. So make sure you guys let me know down in the comment section if you guys have any suggestions on anything that you want to see whatsoever and if there's any players that impressed you a lot and you think they could have a really good season over the first couple of days of the NHL season. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy make sure to drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel for daily NHL content and I will see you guys all in the next video.